You know, Kevin, I can't believe we've already reached the best picture aspect. We've covered everything. We're down to the best picture of the year. And I'll say this. We said this last year. I know we talked about it. A few years ago, the Academy said, okay, we're not going to limit the best picture nominees to five. It can be anywhere between five and ten. So, and then the, that next year, I think there may have been ten the first year. And then it got to nine, eight, whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. This year, we got nine. Why? And, and we want ten. <laughs> Why did we have nine? Especially when we think maybe there's only two or three high, high I mean, we could have stopped at five. We could have. Right. Stopped, stopped. But we could have thrown in Big Sick, Wind River, Baby Driver. Come on. Greatest show, <laughs> <laughs> disaster artist, maybe Florida Project, Florida maybe Project Molly's has game. Got a lot, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I thought Molly's game would be in there. Me too. I really, yeah. really did. And and Jessica Chastain, move over Merrill. She yeah. should have had that nomination, no because doubt. Because I didn't care that much for the movie, but she was magnificent, and I loved her in Zookeeper's right. Wife. So I, I had she had two movies out that that I liked. I don't feel like. When we talked at the beginning of the, the whole segment that it was a bit of a down year. So if you're letting in some movies that aren't amazing, then why not one more? Have, have ten. Why, right. Why not one more? How could they go, no, only these nine yeah. and no more? I mean, we just rattle off easily. A because list you, can't of seven say, you can't say to the, the big sick, uh, you know, we really thought you were one of the best pictures, but we could only do nine. Right. No, no. you could have right. done, done ten. So it's, so it's kind of a double insult. Yeah. You I would know, agree. You know, you're you're good enough, but not good enough for us to give you the tenth slot. It's been ten years, and it's been three times what they've I had. I mean, I say movies. go back to five. Go back to five. Keep it at five. Then everybody gets their feelings hurt, except those. But I don't, it, unless it's something amazing that you just can't decide on uh, right. the, the one who can fit in, and then you can go to six. But the list. Here it is. Again, think about the movie going public. Right. In your mind, think about, gee, me and the spouse want to go out for a night at the movies. Yep. Here are your choices. <laughs> uh, Call Me By Your Name. Okay. Darkest Hour. Dunkirk. Get Out. Lady Bird. Phantom Thread. The Post. The Shape of Water. Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Now, I don't think... A single one of those movies are the type that Mr. and Mrs. Joe America say, hey, yeah, that sounds like a good movie we can, we can go see. I just don't think it is. I would agree. I don't even know what the closest thing would be to a... <laughs> Commercial movie? Yeah. I don't either. You know, I did survey, like I said earlier in the broadcast, close to 40 people. Seven of them had seen Dunkirk. Five had seen Get Out. And nobody had seen, no more than two people had seen any of the yeah. other ones. And... I, by virtue of, of reviewing movies, etc., I socialize, circulate with people who talk about movies to me. Right. I mean, that's just a natural thing. I talk to my friends, people that I know, and I say, "Hey, did you did you go <laughs> see uh, Get Out?" And they're like, "What? Right? What was that?" And then if you say three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, they're like, what? what? Yeah. Not only had people not seen them, they didn't even know what they were. No, they didn't have a, have a yeah. clue. And and then, you know, it's like, oh, uh, somebody told me Meryl Streep had a new movie out. But, right. You know, no, I'm not real familiar with that. I, I just don't understand where these movies came from and blocked out uh, Baby Driver, Big yeah. Sick, Wind River, Greatest Showman, uh, <laughs> you know things like that. I Tanya could have been thrown in there, right? I Tanya, I Tanya, because could've... it's getting uh, best supporting actress, best actress um, acclaim. So why not throw it in there? And for... and, and certainly the the acting. Uh, it was a depressing story, but the Florida uh, Project uh, was was a unique movie. It if, was. If nothing else, you have to say it was unique. It was about you know people who were scraping, eking out their life day by day outside of Disney World in Orlando and children who were involved. That's an amazing story. It and was. like you, you and I talked before, it's not a story that people natu naturally want to see. Yeah. People don't want to spend two hours for a non-feel-good uh -huh. event. Like, you know, a lot of couples don't have that 
much free time. And when they do, they don't want to see something that's relatively depressing that doesn't make you feel good. Whereas I think those powerful um, slices of the real world are, you know, to me, that was a top three movie. I know it wasn't for you, but to me, Florida Project was a top three movie. Right now, the odds on favorite, Jackie, is The Shape of Water. Um, Which surprises me because it's the odds on favorite because of the direction, because of the star, uh, because the story content itself, if you go in there expecting a true life story, yeah. you're going to be majorly <laughs> you will. disappointed. You'll be mad. You are. I would think, yeah. You're going to think, You'll hate the it. creature? Yeah. Come on. And, you know, and, but to, for me, Sally Hawkins was, was enough. But, but you're right. These are not the, the kind of movies. The greatest showman is. You come out of that movie feeling great. Yes. Dancing, singing, yes. whatever. Life is good. People are kind. The whole thing. You come out of Get Out. You know, if anything makes you feel bad about race yeah, relations right, in America, absolutely. you know, these are, you know, white conspiracy to, yeah. to, to take the best and brightest of, of the black population and fill it with the spirit of a white person. <laughs> right. I mean, Call me by your name. I don't think it made 10 million. Right? I no. mean, I feel like you and I might have been the only ones to see it. But, but again... <laughs> You know, hey, honey, let's go see that movie about the gay love story where the kid falls in love with an older man and they have a summer fling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's yeah, mark that's... that one down. <laughs> that's going to be a and tough then, sell. And then, and then a movie like Dunkirk, which which we expected to be magnificent because of Christopher Plummer, because right. of Kenneth Branagh. You and I have talked about, you know... <laughs> It was just a confusing movie, for one thing. <laughs> for you and, and I, there, especially. And there, was no, and there was no character to latch on There to. was not. No, and there was like jumping in time sequences. Well, you had three different segments, yeah. the land, the sea, the air, that were going at different time periods. Yeah. I had joked with you off um, off camera that perhaps if they combine The Darkest Hour with Dunkirk into about a three-hour feature-length film, that might have and been the movie And that would explain it some. Yes. But, you know, I remember... Uh, going to see The Sixth Sense and halfway or a fourth of the way into the movie my wife leaned over and said he's dead uh -uh. and I'm like what? Really? She did. Wow. And, it, and, you know, and somebody I was saying about Dunkirk and they said oh I knew within ten minutes it was three different stories three oh, different times. Man. So it was like the old stupid stamp <laughs> came back and hit me again. Yeah. You know, you didn't know that? Yeah, I used the stamp too for that one. <laughs> I, I did. And you know, and I I think that a lot of people were like me and you and said, wait a minute, it was daytime here and now it's dark as night and then it's evening and then it's morning and then it's night again. That made no sense. I don't know why he wanted to create it. The only thing that I'm trying to give him props for was to show us the true chaotic nature of war. That you didn't know so, who was going which way, well, what Whether direction. it was day or night. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the only thing that I can do to kind of accept a, a huge flaw because I want to care about a movie that I see. I want to care about the characters. I want to care if someone's not living anymore. I want to care if they're put in peril. Well, yeah, and, we were saying Oh no! <laughs> that the, guy, the that kid in the khaki uniform, just got shot. Whoever he was, <laughs> you know. uh, but it was that kind of thing. There was no relationship. Yeah, they could have showed a number of families that drove the boats to rescue yeah. the people on the beach. Yeah. They showed one family, kind of, and that was the only one you cared about a little bit. They could have done that. They could have done a lot of things. I was watching. I watch old movies a lot on on television. I was watching Mrs. Miniver. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, but it, Greer Garson won the Academy Award. For, for her portrayal as this British housewife. And, and in the film, her husband, played by Walter Pigeon, takes a family boat and goes into Dunkirk. Wow. And I got more of a sense of the feeling of the boats, right. you know, of ordinary people going to rescue, than I got out of this whole yep. Dunkirk movie that, that he did. Well, I'll tell you, Jackie, as sad as it is, we're about coming up out of time on our last segment. Mm. So we got to talk about it. Who should win? Who will win? I think three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri is going I to win. I think so too, but, Do you really? but I think I think we may be fooled. Uh, I I really do. I I I've just you know heard this you know that that the black characters weren't developed enough. Yeah. That, that Sam Rockwell's character was such a racist in the film. You know, in this age of political correctness, you know, how can you celebrate a movie that 
you know, does that. I, you know, but you're giving it to the shape of water, aren't you? I, I would like to see the shape. Yeah, and you'll of water, be fine with it. You know, and I would like to see it be the shape of water, even though I know that that's not a movie that America will care about in the long run. Well, in a year of underwhelming movies, it sounds like Shape of Water might just eke out eight other nominees. But you know, in a year of underwhelming movies, though, haven't we had a good time? As we always do. <laughs> that's that's going to be a staple I, yeah. every year, no matter what. No yeah. matter how bad the movies are. The yeah, but one of these right. years, one of these years, we're going to hit up and we're going to say, oh, oh my gosh, yes. what a year this yes. was for movies. I can't wait. I can't either. Yeah. But, you know, but this year, again, those of you who are watching this, it's, you know, if you look not necessarily at the list of best pictures, but you look back on the movies that were released this year, there's some good there movies out there. There are some good there. ones, yeah. You Just know, not on that list. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I hate it for that for that reason that it's not, because you want things to be rewarded that provide entertainment. Without a doubt. Without. Well, Kevin. It's been a pleasure as always, It has always, been Jackie. a great time again. Until next you, year. You've earned your spot. Whew, that's all I wanted to hear, so folks. Relieved, you know, <laughs> Same hold place. Hold back the crowd. <laughs> but but I, we hope you have enjoyed this show. Uh, I'll be back next week with the Jackie K. Cooper Show. And next year, me and Kevin back and the Oscar, it. 91. Thank you, Jackie. All right, thanks. <laughs>